Did you? Is it true you you saw a lady in Manha in Manhattan that was like the basis for Mary Jane, or is that just a joke? Uh, Are no. You kidding me? You mean Stan or me? No, either one of you. I don't know. I thought I heard that story. No, once. actually, uh, he left uh, he left it rather open to me uh, how to interpret her. Actually, I think I based her partially on uh, Anne Margaret. Yeah, that's uh, right. I used Anne Margaret uh, dimples and a cleft in the chin. Yeah. And some of the uh, full full face smile that she had. Because we were trying to make a girl that was very uh, with it and very modern. And, John, uh, do you remember? Do you remember that it started out where Gwen Stacy was Spider-Man, Peter Parker's girlfriend, yes. and we planned he'd eventually marry her. Yes. And then we introduced Mary Jane into the strip, and it was as though they were living creatures. We couldn't make Gwen as interesting as Mary Jane. Yes. Mary Jane took over the strip. That was Gwen the, was gorgeous too. That was yeah. for, that was the way it was supposed to be. She was no, supposed to be. We the, hadn't no, we had it that way. No, no, Stan. Actually, it was a time you were saying, "Let's see if we can make Gwen outshine Mary Jane." And we couldn't. And you kept accusing me of, of <laughs> doing Mary my Jane. favorite character better than your favorite character, <laughs> so, and I could not manage to make. I remember, I couldn't make Gwen. Uh, have as much verve That's and right. excitement about her because she was more reserved and more mature. She was the typical ingenue, and Mary Jane had all that life and that spark saying, we've got to do something to make Gwen yeah. just as appealing, right. exactly. and we couldn't do it. We couldn't oh, and that, do it. that dialogue back in the 60s was just, oh, you, you <laughs> face it, tiger, you hit the jackpot. <laughs> now I'm really if dumb. anyone wants to know why I have always been a Ramita fan, I think we're seeing it right here. Well, yeah, you see, you'll notice right. another. I always had a darker lipstick on Mary Jane, yeah, and that's always right. a very that's pale right. lipstick on Gwen. She was a lady, and Mary Jane was a sort of a tramp. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never thought of it that. Nineteen sixty-five. I thought it was finished, uh, and I said, "Oh, ink. You know, I can help you that way. If you give me pencils, I can polish them up a little bit." First thing he did was pull out a daredevil assignment and said, "Could I help him out in an emergency?" I was a, what I call a good soldier, and I said, "Sure. If you need help, I'll help you out with that." Fully expecting I'll go back to inking after I finish this one daredevil story. I did daredevil, and I started to like it thanks to Jack Kirby's indoctrination with breakdowns. Third or fourth month, I did it. Spider-Man as a guest star. He was trying me out for Spider-Man without my knowledge. So suddenly he comes to me and said, do you think you could do Spider-Man on a monthly basis? And I said, I guess so, but I like to do Daredevil. And he said, uh, well, he said, Steve Ditko's leaving Spider-Man. Would you mind? And I figured, all right, I'll help him out with this. Somebody had told me that Daredevil's sales had improved while I was on it. 
I was feeling great. I was saying, hey, wouldn't it be nice if I could move Daredevil up to be one of the top sellers? But I never had a chance to find out. So that run on Daredevil was more like a, a, a blissful period of six months that I enjoyed myself tremendously. I loved that character. I, thought that, I still, to this day, think Daredevil is the best character Marvel has. so much to learn it's it's ridiculous and that's the exciting part about it so when i'm 95 years old I'm be satisfied <laughs> maybe you'll have it done. you'll keep at it until you get it